in. Hey, Pokemon, what are you doing? Well, I'm fixing the doorknob. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> Mama will adore you for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. Well, as you heard my granddaughters say, I'm fixing the doorknob. I'm not really fixing the doorknob. I'm changing the doorknob and deadbolt on this garage door. By the way, they have their own little YouTube channel if you want to see some silliness going on. The M Girls on YouTube, look them up. So I'm not fixing the doorknob. I'm replacing the doorknob and deadbolt. My issue was this door is old and worn out. How do I know it's old and worn out? Because this door and I are the same age. And it exists in my old and worn out garage. Hey, by the way, I'm gonna be redoing this garage coming up sometime. I'm gonna gut it, the whole thing, gone. I'm gonna be redoing the electrical. I'm gonna do lighting. I'm gonna do insulation, drywall, all that good stuff. So if you wanna follow that, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and follow along with me on that journey. Uh, it'll be a little while before I do that, but it is coming, I hope. So this door is getting replaced, um, but it might be six to nine months from now, maybe 12 months, I don't know. But I wanted to put an electronic deadbolt on here. But the issue is with this door being the age it is, the boring isn't large enough for the new deadbolt. So if you've ever done anything like this before, you know how hard it can be to make an existing hole larger. A couple different ways you can do that, and I wanna show you what I've come up with and what I've seen done. Easiest way for me to do this, if I wanna just get it done real quick, is to use one of these jigs, which I happen to have, because I've done a bunch of these. I used to do this for people a lot. I would buy the slab doors and I'd have to cut out the borings for the lock and deadbolt. So this jig came in really handy. I've done a lot of doors with this plastic jig and it's held up really well. I don't remember what it cost. If I can find it on Amazon or something, I'll put a link in the description. If you wanna just get one of these, you just clamp that on the door where you need it. It's got the guide here for your hole saw to guide you through that door. The reason you can't just use a hole saw on this is because there's you have nothing to support it. When, the, when this is all one piece, you have a pilot bit that goes right in the center and that helps hold your hole saw where it needs to stay to get through this door. But I don't have that, so you can use one of these, but for you all, I'm gonna do it a little bit harder way, but it's still not difficult just to show you how it can be done without one of these if you don't wanna go buy one of these because if you're only gonna use it once, there's no use in spending the money on it unless you wanna use it and sell it or keep it around in case someone else needs it. That's up to you how you spend your money. So for the way I'm gonna show you how to do this, you're gonna need a couple pieces of scrap plywood. Uh, I use three quarter. I just like the extra thickness to hold my hole saw in place. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. As you can see, I already have a hole in this piece of plywood. So when you put it over your hole, you can just center it and leave the same reveal over that hole clamp it with a couple clamps, and then take your hole saw. You will need a hole saw to do this work. You can't, you won't be able to do it without it. I mean, and not, you won't be able to make it look good without it, let's put it that way. So you, you will have to get a hole saw. If you don't have one, you're gonna have to borrow one, go buy one, something. This is a two and three eighths, and I've used this piece of plywood before, and you can take this piece of plywood and you can go ahead and drill your hole through this plywood. This will guide your drill through your door. So when the when the hole's just a little bit smaller, you're going to have to uh, just line that up. Now, if you're concerned about getting it lined up correctly, you can get another hole saw that is the same size as the existing hole. And what that does is you can clamp a piece of plywood to your door, clamp it on there good, and then take the existing size and just drill through till that pilot hole comes through the back side of the plywood. That will give you the exact center of that piece of plywood. Once you get that, now, now don't run this one all the way through the plywood. Only run it until this tip of the pilot drill goes through the back side of the plywood. Then you're gonna take your other drill bit and run through the plywood first and use that hole as your center line. When you have your pilot hole on the back side, you're gonna clamp another piece of plywood here 
Make sure you don't move this one or you'll be off center. That just gives you extra backing on this door so whenever the bit comes through, it won't damage the door. But that's an easy way to do it. Then you have your hole the right size and you're ready to go. Now, I recorded this a little bit earlier and I didn't have any audio. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of that and you can see exactly how I did this. This hole was too small and now it's just the right size for me to be able to put my deadbolt on here, my electronic deadbolt. I'm not gonna go through the installation of the electronic deadbolt. That's pretty straightforward and you're gonna to have to read the directions anyway for the specific one you get. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things I don't need to do. So anyway, when you run into this and you could, if you have older doors that the hole will not match up with the new lock, you're gonna to have to make this one bigger. So, hey, I hope that helped in some way. And if not, then, oh well, thank you for watching anyway. If you don't mind, give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button, especially if you want to watch the process of me gutting this garage, redoing the electrical inside and out, lighting inside and out, and insulate. I'm just, I'm just going to go through the whole process. We're going to replace this door. I'm going to take the door from the dining room, put here. Um, I'm going to cut in a new door down at the end of the garage to go out the side of the house instead of the back. So I'm going to be doing a lot here. So if you want to follow that, be sure and subscribe. I really appreciate you watching today, and I want to thank my granddaughters for helping me on this. They love being on video, and they love being silly. So I want to thank them for helping me with it. That was fun. I pray that God blesses you, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.